ask a fun question to start up the film. Um, it's going to be to both of you, but James, I'll just kick it off. What was your first job in the movie industry? My first job in the movie industry was uh, extra work in, in uh, a TV movie of the week with Melissa Sue Gilbert and Scott Valentine from, I think that was his name, or maybe I'm mixing up his name with his character from uh, Family Ties. And it was this movie of the week and I was 16 and I had to get a work permit to do extra work on it. And that was my first job in the industry. All same question to you. Okay, um, our rap, our high school rock band played the rap party of the labyrinth <laughs> in 85 because one of the guys worked in the foam shop with Jim Henson. But my and, and my first professional gig was in 89 where a cinematographer in England called Tim Marsh Jones, a good shooter, was kind of shooting and directing and he just wanted to be a DP. So I met him at a backyard barbecue. He said, well, you can direct this thing. I'll shoot it. And Bob's your uncle. It just started from there. It was a gift, really. Yeah, Paul, you uh, wrote and direct a film. What kind of inspired the project of I Challenge You? Well, I wanted to make a stoner comedy because it's a very undersubscribed market. And, and I wanted to make a contained thriller ever since I saw Buried with Ryan Reynolds. I knew I wanted to do something either in a box or a trunk of a car. And I've written a bunch of screenplays. And then, um, so I knew we were playing with these two things. And then my co-writer found uh, that in Russia, these kids were doing it. They were burying themselves for luck. So we just were like, that's it. And then the making it an internet challenge. It just seemed to tie into the the craziness of where we're all at, you know, right now, um, you know, but it's really, a, it's really a portrait of a character, really. It's a kind of, you know, it's a study of one person. It's funny that you mentioned Barry because it's one of my films that I love. I think it's a very underrated, nobody talks about style film. And I was going to ask you if you kind of used any of that as your inspiration for the film. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, obviously we couldn't do what they did on Barry, you know, um, you know, the box they had as they moved around it, the sides came up, like they could do a lot more complicated moves within the box, but that whole movie's in the box and ours was only 15, 20 minutes. So I, we were limited, but you know, my experience in shooting for 20, 30 years, it's like, I have the ability to be able to create the shot that I want in my head. You know, I know how to do that now. And we use specific, you know, periscope equipment and, you know, to, to kind of make it work. But yeah, it definitely was inspired by that. You know for sure in fact that was one of the directions he gave me as an actor was before we started shooting after understanding the full scope of what we were going to film was to watch buried that's get awesome the, get a nice feel for it which the the only thing about watching that movie i've got to be honest you know because i'm not so claustrophobic i think as other people although i've had my moments was I had to get out of my mind how great Ryan Reynolds is. It's like, there's no way I'm going to follow this. <laughs> right. So I just have to not think about that, you know, and I was able to, and I was able to. Yeah, my, my brother was like that. He didn't want to see it. He goes, why do I want to see someone in the box for now? It, it's interesting. The movies do that. And, but to me, you know, it was important to create, because, you know, this is a comedy thriller. We wanted it take you from the laughs and the stupidity into this like absurdly <laughs> terrifying situation you know for the humor but also you know it's interesting he goes Sid crosses over the threshold into the underworld you know in subtext and a lot of stuff interesting stuff happens where he has to confront his past and um yeah being in the box seemed the right place to do that and Jimmy was great I mean he <laughs> but a couple of times he was in that box and we couldn't get the lid off remember Jimmy like let me yeah. yeah, and they were like, and they weren't letting me. I'm like, why are they not letting me out? And they're like, oh, you, you're serious. We thought you were just rehearsing. Because I did spend a lot of time rehearsing. Yeah. And there were a couple of times, you know, when you get, I got a little carried away and it freaked me out a little bit. And I wanted out of the box and I couldn't get out right away. Yeah, it was great. It was, um, you know, obviously we did that on the stage. We didn't put it in the box underground, but you know, create that, that, and that was part of the illusion too, was, you know, the, the shot of him in the box where it's like kind of cross section, you know, it's a little bit of Wes Anderson, like it's fantasy. This film is based in real characters, but it's kind of, you know, it's just it's slightly fantastical, you know what I mean? So that's why I bury myself under realism was not, the, was not important, you know. <laughs> Uh, James, when you first get the kind of the script and the idea of the role, what kind of attracted you to do this project? Um, I think the character of Sid in, 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 
in, in himself, um, really. Um, I remember when they sent me the script and I read the script and I was really, you know, the journey is really bizarre, honestly. It's a, it's a bizarre journey, but Sid, he's got so much heart and there's so much about the character that I love and related to in a lot of ways that I just felt the urge, I, I felt that I had to go on this journey if they would have me and let me take this bizarre journey with Sid and just really kind of see where it led us. Mm. And I mean, you know, from my point of view, from getting the script to filming it to where we're at now, I still honestly, I can't, you know, I, I'm floored that they trusted in me as an actor to bring this to life because I had the time, I had the time of my life making this. Yeah, Paul, follow up to you is obviously you're blending that comedic humor, but also there is that that last like 15, 20 minutes kind of when Sid is stuck underground. How do you how did you balance the humor and that thrilling aspect together? Well, I think because, you know, by the time you're in the box, you kind of like Sid. You know, the beginning of the movie, you, it's, it's, you don't like you're like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And, and then you grow to like him as you see other people like him. It's, it signals us to be like, you know what, this is a good guy. So by the time he's in the box, you care about him, you know, and, and so you, you, you're you rooting for him. And um, with, with everything else that's going on with the lottery and all that, it's it, there's a lot of distractions to take you away from what they're doing. And then suddenly it gets scary. It dawns upon you, which is like when you're stoned, right? Or <laughs> like suddenly you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> what situation am I in? You know, he... Uh, so it was part. It was partly that, but you know, also going into this, we didn't really know it was an experimental element to this film. So we didn't know how that would come across because it's a comedy, but it's not. It's situational. There's no jokes. So we were like, is it going to be funny? But we didn't really know, right, James? We thought we were laughing, but we didn't know. Like, I didn't know how funny it would be, whether it would be scary or. Yeah, all we could do is just do what was funny to us. Yeah, you know, like I, I remember. We were we were having this conversation a lot on set. Is I thought I, and and I'm in real life, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I think it's funny when people freak out and they lose their temper. It makes me laugh. <laughs> Not that I hang people on, but it makes me laugh. You know, because there's just something just comedic about someone who loses their temper. Yeah. And so it was this idea of like having you know, because Sid loses his temper a lot, but to not go overboard with that you know there had you had to keep this realness to that that was a kind of almost a, an absurd laughable yeah and, and the only one who's not laughing is Sid and that was key going into this film is Devil Wears Prada like you know when Meryl Streep smiles at the end of the film and it's like that was what I want he smiles right at the end of the movie that's the only time he does it so it's kind of breaking the shell it's about someone pivoting from negative to positive finding luck and, and, and kind of it's about a lonely guy, right? And how love is out there all around. We just have to, you know, you have to want it. You have to look for it. It's not just going to land in your lap. But because he's a good person, karmically, things work out for him. But he has to go through hell first. You know, he has to cross the threshold. There's, a, You know, I'm a big proponent and fan of Joseph Campbell. <laughs> and there's a lot of mythology in the film. It's all in the subtext. And um, and that's where people Hero's turn to journey. Party. I very much saw him like that, Paul. I very much saw it like the hero's journey. Yeah. So, and, and it's open to every man. You know what I mean, Jimmy? It's like we did it not knowing where it was going to land, really. And so it's open to interpretation of what people want to take from it, really. Uh, James, your counterpart in this is Coy Stewart in that second half of the film. What was it? He, he seems like he's a lot of fun and just kind of spunky in some aspects. What was it like working with him? Well, you know, I have, I have to you know, a lot of my performance to thank him for, you know, I was, I was really lucky to have him um, to bounce stuff off of because I, you know, in a lot of ways it's, and you hear this a lot, but it's true. You can only be as good as the actor you really you're performing with. And, you know, I like to think of these actors, you know, and no, no offense to myself is a little bit better than me, you know, a little bit more seasoned, been doing this, you know, for quite some time. I mean, I have too, but not since I was a child, child. And um, that brings a lot of weight to the performances, not just his, but mine, you know? So in a lot of ways, his energy and, you know, cause his characters, the, it, it's in a lot of ways, what Sid would like to be, what he pretends to be, but it's not, you know, he's a little bit more, ha no, he's a lot more happy and go, you know, 
go free, you know, carefree, happy, uh, doesn't have a lot of worries or stresses in the world, you know, still doesn't pay bills, still lives with mom, you know, so got his whole life ahead of him. And, and it's, and I think it's also those things, you know, that not only reminds Sid of who he was, but who he still is in a lot of ways, you know, yeah. he, he's, he doesn't live with his parents, but he lives a life that he wants to live at home. I mean, he's playing video games all day and smoking weed and selling it to kids. Who, to, to, I like to think to under, un, to uh, the underrepresented population. That's how I'd, I'd like to think of it. I'm, I'm helping the underrepresented population find their high too. Because <laughs> why not? Because they'll find it anyway. And why not find it from a nice guy rather than some asshole in the street? You know, well, that's what we reveal Sid as a nice person. We, you know, we grow to, to like someone that we think is unlikable. And, and that's Jimmy, really. I mean, he amazingly put so much of himself into this where, you know, because we had different ideas for the character going in. It was written a little differently. But when upon meeting James, it was like, oh, man, he knows how to do this. And, you know, put so much of his own sensitivity into the film. You know, we wanted Sid to be a sensitive character it's a role reversal this film right he's the damsel in distress in a way if you think about it with what happens with tina so you know it was that was important to show that sensitivity and honestly i couldn't think of another actor that has that because james is sensitive like that's what makes him a great actor in my opinion is that he can tap into the, the emotion so i got two questions inspired obviously by the film and, and whoever wants to answer first do you think that either one of you either one of you do you think you can last 24 hours buried underground I wouldn't attempt that in real life. <laughs> no way. I got claustrophobic watching yeah. James in the box. So I, I just, I, I was just like, man, I think I would probably last maybe a minute before I would freak out and just be like, all right, get me out of here. I'm done here. And yeah. then, you know, the couple times I did was when I was completely shut off into it because for the most part, to be honest, there was always one element missing. So the camera could see through the top or on the side. So I was never really fully trapped in except for, well, I guess there were the, those moments were. where we there shut the whole box were, off and yeah, then when we, when we see were the stuff through the GoPros. Yeah. So just through the GoPro. Yeah, definitely. Next question. What would the first thing you would buy if you won $300 million? Whew. First thing I would buy? Actually, you know, that's a great question. I mean, I guess I would just, from where I'm at, from where I'm at now, I would just, I would just move to a humble little place that had a yard, and then get a dog so my dog had a yard. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I just want the simple things in life, like everybody else. Oh, and I want a cat too. I want a dog and a cat that get along. Well. Oh, well, I would fund the 20 or so scripts that I've written. They would all go right back in. You know, we self-funded this. It was a micro, small movie, 12 days. Um, you know, that's that's my plan. And that's my path is just to, you know, make hopefully with them some interest. And if we get a little bit of uh, viewership, you know, we can get some investors and, and make them slightly bigger than this one. But our hands weren't tied. They were only tied by time, right, Jimmy? Because it's an equation making a movie you know what i mean it was just a certain amount of people a certain amount of time and um but we set challenges because there's a lot of production design in this movie for a low budget movie <laughs> with the box and, and especially the apartment and getting all that it was you know it was definitely a challenge in the art department side yeah we, we shot the movie in 12 days so it was rather quick shoot for a feature film certainly from one of the fastest i've ever shot a film before we go, so James, I was doing my research on you, and obviously, with my wife is a yoga teacher. I, I kind of wanted to get. I saw that you do some yoga teaching. Well, how did you get into that? Um, I would like to say I was looking for balance in my life, which, pardon me, but uh, after I found it, which it did provide a tremendous amount of balance for me. But I got in a car accident, and my back was pretty bad. For about six months, nine months, I I think I was about 20, it was right after Donnie Darko. So I was having trouble. I just did a string of movies and then all of a sudden I couldn't work at all. I couldn't move. I had trouble rolling over and I started, it, the pain was pretty bad. And so I started going to a chiropractor and that didn't really help. 
So I went to a different chiropractor who started doing acupuncture and acupressure. And turns out they were giving me yoga poses too, and then recommended me to yoga class. So I went to this yoga class. It was probably the hardest thing I'd ever done. I felt like someone beat me up and then peed on me and then pushed me overboard. If that makes any sense, um, I threw up afterwards. And then um, the next day I couldn't move every muscle, my muscles I didn't know I had hurt. And then a couple of days after that, when my ex-girlfriend at the time, when my girlfriend at the time, but my ex-girlfriend now had, who was going regularly went back, I found myself saying I would never go back. I was, I was grabbing my towel and how crazy she was and grabbing a bottle of water. What else do I need? Two towels. Again. Then another, and going back. And within probably a few months, not only did I, all the pain go away but i all of a sudden was in the best shape of my entire life then within about six months to a year the mental stuff started to, to happen and as an artist as an actor or musician or whatever you do that's really where the true strength comes from is that mental sharpness that mental clarity that stability the ability to let go and detach or to to attach and then to detach again so to speak so i found that it really became a key for me not only in my health but in my work so i the breathing is essential same thing as an actor so i found that all these things kind of crossed over and then so to this day like i'll be doing yoga tonight at 8 30 i mean i haven't had the chance of teaching a few years now but i still practice regularly I just thought that was awesome. So um, yeah, and everything you described, how you felt after your first class is everything I felt after taking my wife's first class. So I totally understood what you were saying. So you know, I'll never do this again. You're out of your mind. And then here I am back in it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'd love, to, I'd love to get your take on the film. Like if you if, did you get take in, take anything away from it? What was your vibe? So for me, whenever I watched it, I did love the perspective of, of Sid. I, I saw a lot of, um, I see a lot of my brother in Sid in some different aspects. So I saw a lot of reminiscence of, and it, obviously with, um, with Coy and James's relationship in the film, it kind of reminded me how me and my brother kind of reconnected. We reconnected over video games. Um, we kind of had a restrained relationship for a little while. And he was like, hey, let's play some video. He's like, I'm playing this game. I was like, I went out that day. I bought a PlayStation. I went home. I, I set it up. And that's how we kind of reconnected and reformed our relationship. And then as he kind of, as we see his character move on this journey of, of like you said, it's kind of luck in some ways, but and it can be seen as luck. But I just think that it's a good person trapped in bad situations that can kind of come out on top. And I think that's for me personally, what I see from that is it's not always the circumstances around us that really kind of inhibit us from, from doing things. It can just kind of wait it out and play it out how it should be. And that's kind of where I see this character pro progress from start to finish. Like you said, his character is rooted in this positivity, but he doesn't see that, right? You know what I mean? He does. Yeah, he sells weed to the, like he said, the underrepresented kind of people in the community. Is that particularly right? No, but it's, he's doing the good for, uh, his his predicament isn't terrible, right? You know what I mean? He, they just go to his house and he, you're not going to get robbed. You're not going to get, you know, hoodwinked or anything like that. He's just trying to help others feel free in right. their everyday lives. So that's kind of what I took away from it. Let's go, yeah, and he doesn't take advantage of the girls that put an opportunity in his lap. He, he's a good guy. He's like, what am I, Captain Creepy? Like, we, we, as we begin to peel away <laughs> the surface, we understand, <laughs> oh, this is actually a good guy under here. And, and then you root for him, hopefully. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, thanks to James. With all of his experience, all the movies and stories he's done, he, he understands how to represent the character. And he understands camera, like, unbelievably, like, that was a beautiful thing. He knew, he knew, he knew his space and, um, you know, and, and to, to go into such a tiny little space. I mean, you know, we talk about buried in Ryan Reynolds, a brilliant actor, right? Well, James is up there, man. Cause he was in that box and he made it terrifying. Like we were all <laughs> looking I, at it. I, honest, well, I honestly couldn't do it without you, captain. That's Paul's okay. cause Paul is a captain. Um, it's, it's interesting because I was going to say, which is true, that, you know, not only do the characters of Sid and Logan bring out the best in each other, 
But that's how I felt working with Coy, that he brought out the best. I mean, I hope I brought out the best in him too, because I thought he was fantastic. But what I wanted to put on top of it was Paul also brought out the best in me. That I feel, you know, where I, once I was let go to play in my little playpen, I was fr I felt free. Yeah. So I could give anything, you know, and, and if he needed an adjustment, he needed me to pull something back or bring something out a little bit more. It was, it was very natural and organic to do. It wasn't, it was the easiest direction to understand. And that really did, I help, think, help bring out the best in me as well. I think it's Thank like, you, Paul. You know, with buddy comedies, you know, it's the always having the straight guy, you know, and Logan in a way plays that against your oddball wackiness he and, definitely you know, total, is like total the stable opposite. one of us too <laughs> like, to, like total opposites who have so much in common yeah they bring out the best each other and then what they do have in common is they got they both got a lot of heart yeah yeah but they have similar interests completely different people both are living a lie too i mean logan he could be 15 right he says he's 18 we don't listen with his mom i mean that's the whole point and who are we really underneath it all you know, and why would someone? That's galore. That's who we would, are. Why would someone seek you out as a woman? Like you know, that's an interesting thing. A woman is pursuing you in this film. This strange, weird character. You know, there's a he, Sid has a charm, and you've got that. Like that's what what you brought to it, James. There's a kind of innate, charming. You know, there's a quality that you just want to like him. You know, what I mean, that's what I get from Jimmy. I like you, Jimmy. I love. Yeah, I love you, Captain. Thank you.